Hi everyone, and welcome to our video on an average cost, average revenue, average profit, and then marginal average cost, marginal average, average revenue, and marginal average profit problem. All right, so whenever they talk about average whatever, so average cost, average revenue, average profit, all it is is to take whatever the respective function is and divide by x. Divide by x, divide by x, divide by x. So there's our average cost function. So it's the cost function divided by x. And then same with the revenue, it's the revenue function divided by x. Profit divided by x is the average profit. Okay, so they use that little bar for the average, average, I'm just going to say blank. Okay, so all those bars there, you see it, let's bold it. So those little bars above the letter mean it's average. All right, so let's just take take those and divide by x. However, we'll have to do some calculus in a second. Let's, let's deal with it, though, one by one. Okay, so... Um, I don't know why that's spelled wrong, oh well. Okay, so it says, Steph's embroidery finds that the cost of producing X canvases is given by C of X equals 500 plus 40X minus 0.2X squared dollars, and the revenue of selling X canvases is R of X equals 80X to the 0 0.8. Find the rate at which average cost, okay, so at we see average, but they also say rate changing. So that means we do need to find the derivative of average cost. And then we'll plug in a number. Okay, so first thing, let's just get the average cost. I'm going to abbreviate average cost would be C of X with the bar over C. And then you take your cost function. So we've got that right here. So 500 plus 40x minus 0.2x squared over x. So there's our average cost. That's it. Okay, so and we could we could change things a little bit, but I think it's fine. Number two. Now let's get the uh, so when they say rate, let's let's even color code it. So the rate changing so that, that's our marginal average cost. That's the derivative of what we just found. Okay, and so we see, oh, this is a quotient. So we've got our high and our low, and we'll break it down there. Okay, so I'm going to use some colors. So my big old fraction bar okay so remember our derivative of i'm just going to write it to the side so if we have a high function and a low function our derivative is low d high minus high d low all over our low low or low squared so it always starts with low the top starts with low and the bottom starts with low so low d high minus high d low over low low or low squared all right so let's let's do these i'm gonna do my colors let's do let's i'll do the black ink still so i'm gonna do high in the black ink and then let's do low let's do it in green low in the green ink okay so it starts off low times the derivative of the high so these i'm just going to write in let's go one one step at a time still with this derivative okay so the derivative of the high derivative of 500 zero derivative of 40x would be 40 derivative of the negative 0.2x squared so the two will multiply the front i'm going to do that as minus 0.4x and then we've got our minus the high function, okay, so I need a bigger fraction. The high function is the 500 plus 40x minus the 0.2x squared. And then over, well, not over yet, times the derivative of the low, our low function is x, so its derivative is 1, all over our low function squared. 
Okay, so that that's our second step, and then we should we should clean it up. I'm gonna put it over here to the left to make sure I think I'll have enough room. So we've got this x distributes. Let's get a big old fraction again. So we've got 40x minus 0.4x squared, and then this negative distributes. So does this one, but the, the one's nice because it's not going to change anything. So it's like multi, two things distributing at once, but one is no not a big deal. So really just the negative. So minus 500 minus 40x plus 0.2x squared all over our low one squared. There we go, is x squared. Okay, and then after this, what we need to do is, is I mean, we could simplify it actually one more time. Let's see what we've got in the numerator. So we've got, here's our x squared terms that can be combined. And it looks like I have some x terms that can be combined. Look at that. Those are, the in the pink, are the same things, but opposite. So those zero out. So it simplifies a little nice, at least. Okay, so I'm going to put that right below again just to make sure I think I'll have enough room. So the highlighted yellow becomes negative 0.2x squared and then minus 500 and then it's still over x squared. Okay so I'm gonna cloud this. That they might want anyway. Okay, but now that we have it, now we can answer their last thing here. Do it in one other color. Okay, so my purple. When 100 canvases are sold, so this is the third step to let x equal 100. That's, that's why I went over there to the left. So now we're going to plug that into our marginal average cost function. So we'd have, oops, change the x, not x, 100 actually. So we have the average, the derivative of the average cost of 100 equals, so we've got negative 0.2 times 100 squared minus 500 and then over 100 squared. Okay, so this is where a calculator would be needed. Um, I'm going to take a second to plug it in. So give me a minute here. So, because um, I, I don't think I can pull one up right now on the screen or it'll freak out. Okay, so we've got. So I'm going silent. Okay, so the top, there we go. So it's weird. Maybe fast forward a second until I've got it. Um, okay, so it would be negative 2500, so negative 2500, and then down below 10,000. And then when we uh, um, cancel these out, okay, so the zeros cancel, zeros cancel, and then negative 25 over 100 would be negative 0.25. Okay, and it says it should be in dollars. Okay, so dollars. And then per, our unit is canvases, so per canvas. Okay, so I'm going to box that. There we go. Okay, so negative, really 25 cents per canvas. Okay, so that means the cost is decreasing oops, not just cost, average cost, sorry. And let me put it in black ink too. Average cost is decreasing by 25 cents per canvas at uh, 100 canvases produced.
Okay, so sorry, squeezing it in there. Okay, so that, that would be if we need to explain our wording for that answer. Okay, so, and it might might be worthwhile to take a pause. We're, we're going to do a very similar thing with this next one. So find the rate at which average revenue is changing when 100 canvases have been produced and sold. Okay, so we've got average revenue. So similar to before, average revenue would be R with the bar. R with the bar, so it rhymes there, huh? R with the bar. And then um, we just write the revenue function, which we have. I'm bolding it, 80x to the 0 0.8 divided by x. Well, this one, we could use the quotient rule on when we do get the second part. So our second part in blue. So again, we see rates changing. That means do a derivative. So step two, we need the marginal average revenue. So just send it up. However, we don't need to do the quotient rule on this one because I, my numerator and denominator each have one term. I'm going to use the rule here. Remember, if you have a base raised to a power over a base raised to a power, you can subtract the two powers. OK, so what this becomes then, we can squeeze this in. I'm going to erase that arrow. Oops, that, that was a little long. I just wanted that next to it. So when we do that subtraction, the 80 is just hanging out. And then 0.8, so here's my scratch work, 0.8 minus, that has a 1 power on it, minus 1 would be 0 0.2. Oops, negative 0 0.2. So it would be x to the negative 0 0.2. Okay, so that's our revenue function. Our average revenue function, sorry, again, average revenue function. And then this is a lot easier to just do the derivative of. Okay, so the 80 is just hanging out. And then the negative 0.2 would multiply the front. And then minus 1 from the power would be negative 1.2. Okay, so if you wanted to do the quotient rule, you could. It would give you the same thing eventually. This one's a little nicer, though, a little quicker. Okay, and so then we just have to multiply the 80 and the 0.2 and make sure it's negative. So our marginal average revenue is negative 16. That's what that simplifies to. And then x to the negative 1.2. Okay, so this is our marginal, average marginal revenue function. And then they want to see, well, what happens when you plug in 100? Okay, so that's our third step. Step three is to let x equal 100. So we've got r bar like that. So the derivative of the average revenue would equal negative 16 times 100 to the negative 1.2. Okay, so that's going to be a weird number. Um, again, I don't think I can pull up a calculator. I'm going to try to do it just real quick here on my phone and see if it works out okay. So again, going silent, being weird. But I've got it. Okay, so we get a, a weird decimal. So we get negative 0 0.064. Well, let's just say 6. So around, because they usually want it rounded to the nearest cent. Okay, so the, there, there we are. So the revenue is negative as well. And that's a dollar symbol per canvas. Okay, so that also means our average revenue is decreasing at a rate of 0 0.06, so, so 6 cents per canvas at 100 canvases sold.
Okay, so and, but comparing the two, so notice the marginal revenue it's it's decreasing, but cost is decreasing more. So this might be fine. Okay, so that that might be okay. Okay, now let's find the marginal average profit. Okay, so while profit, remember that profit itself is revenue minus cost. And then, well, if I do divide all of these by X, that, that will still mean that the average profit would be equal to the average revenue minus the average cost. And then I want to find marginal. Marginal, remember, is derivative. So just a different phrasing of what they said there. Let me let me use blue still. So marginal is still a derivative. So that means the derivative of our average profit is the derivative of our average revenue minus the derivative of our average cost. Notice they're still using the same x value here. Okay, so that means I can plug it in. So this one's not as bad as the others, actually. So we've got the average or the marginal average profit at 100 is equal to the marginal average revenue at 100 minus the marginal average cost at 100. And we have both of those already from the two previous examples. So we don't have to go through the, the whole find a derivative and plug things in. We can just use our previous information. Okay, so let me actually, I'll continue this in the purple. So our marginal average profit is equal to the marginal average revenue at 100 was negative 0 0.06 minus the marginal average cost was negative 0.25. There we are. And then now we could do this addition. So I said addition because the minus and the negative become a positive. So that becomes a plus. And then we get the marginal average profit at 100 canvases made and sold is 19 cents per canvas. Okay, there we go. So, and let's make it final. Okay, so at, I'm gonna word it like this, at 100 canvases uh, produced and sold the average profit is increasing at 19 cents per canvas. Okay, boom, finally. Okay, so tough problem. Okay, so a lot, uh, because it was long, um, Oh, and it's also just tough. I mean, lots of things in calculus. Okay, so maybe Steph's embroidery maybe needs to change up their plan. 19 cents profit per canvas um, on average is, isn't probably the best, but whatever. Okay, so that, but but we can still find it. Okay, so breaking it down. Um, so again, whenever they say average cost, average revenue, average profit, you're taking those main functions and just dividing by X. Sometimes you can do the quotient rule. Sometimes you can simplify beforehand, and then sometimes you don't even need to find a full derivative because maybe you already had the information. Okay, so good luck with these pro style problems. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.